What is going on, everybody? It's your also beloved and glorious Mace Valor, and today I've got something for you. Let's rewind the clock. It's 2011, specifically Halloween, but this story that I'm about to tell takes place directly after Halloween, actually the morning after Halloween, and it was something that made me break the mold of who I was, and it's something that to this day kind of defines who I am. This one act, this one uh, event that transpired all because it was my own doing, and this is how I took hold and became a man. So it's 2011. It's Halloween. Me and my boys, we get together, right? It's me, Kenny, Bree, Chris. We're driving down the Impala, screaming down Evans Mills. You know, I'm dressed up all nice, good to go. I got my, my white shirt on, my white button up. I got my black blazer. And because it's Halloween and I need to have some kind of costume on, I have all this black fucking paint just like jizzed all over the side of my fucking face. It was great. It was wonderful. Loved it. <clears throat> anyway, so we're screaming down the road and uh, we see our buddy Tim. We see Tim Tim, man. Dickie Simpkins himself in the flesh walking on the side of the road with some duffel bags you know we pull on over we're like yo tim what's going on man i don't want to talk to you i don't want to talk to nobody i'm sick of this shit done i'm like whoa hold on what's going on well it turns out that his wife had kicked him out that night and it was horrible so what did we do as friends we told him you know get in the paula let's go we're gonna party we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna make sure you forget all of this and he's like yes that's what we're doing we're doing it tonight and tomorrow and for the rest of the time we're gonna be on fire and it was crazy. This this was a fire night, a crazy event, as the kids would say um, nowadays. It was lit, fam. It was great. We had a blast. Uh, so we get to the house. Um, we start pre gaming, right? And then we go to the bar and we game some more. You know, just just pounding shots. Like, like who cares about work in the morning? Let's just do this. And then we end up going to a friend's house, and there was some crazy stuff, you know, that happened there. You know, some words were thrown, some things were tossed around. It was a crazy night, right? So we get back to the house, drop everybody off. So me and Kenny, my boy Kenny, we get up in his uh, Malibu. This thing was a hoopty, hoopty, hoopty piece of garbage, okay? Let me tell you about this thing. This car was bad. It could had the, the brakes didn't work for whatever reason. He was too cheap, spending his money on alcohol instead of things that actually mattered. So no insurance, expired license, no registration, bought the car, never got it signed in his name. It was just nuts, like how many things were wrong with this car, and the brakes didn't work. So in order to actually use the brakes to stop the damn car, you had to use the emergency brake, which that was... Thankfully, there was no snow out just yet. It was very thankful for that, because we would have been skidding all over upstate New York. But what ended up happening was, is we get in this hoopty piece of shit car, we're driving back on post, right? Because I was in the military at the time. So we get back on post. We get to the gate, right? And there's this cute little Asian girl. This, 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 she was military police and she's taking up our ID cards. And thankfully she didn't ask for like the insurance and all the other information because from time to time they, they, they do, they do, do, do that. And thankfully that didn't happen. Thankfully. So she, you know, she gets our ID cards, scans, we're good to go. And I'm asking her like, Hey, uh, wow, you guys work even on like holidays. Like, like what's the work schedule like for you guys? Cause I'm, I'm, we're cooks and you know, we hardly ever get time off. And she's like, Oh yeah, I hardly ever get time off. I'd probably get maybe one day a week if that. And I was like, Oh wow, that's crazy. She's like, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to do something, but I usually just stay in my room. I'm like, wow, that sucks. And then we drove off. Right. And I was telling Kenny, I was like, Kenny, Got a feeling. I don't. I don't think she was given a sign or anything, but I think that there was a window of opportunity for me there, and I think I just missed it. And he's like, "Man, this sucks. You better try and fix that." And I was like, "You're right. Turn the car around." He's like, "What?" He's like, "I'm gonna go fix that right now." And he's like, "All right, let's do it, dog." And so we get up to the the, the first intersection. We flip a bitch. We get down past the guard gate, past all the way down to the next intersection outside of post. Flip another bitch. Flipping bitches for days. So, and then we wheel on back up to the gatehouse. And this cute little Asian MP girl, Kelly Bone was her name. She says, hey, uh, welcome to Fort Drum. Like all confused, like deja vu. Didn't I just see you guys? Give her our ID cards and stuff. And I lean over Kenny because I'm in the passenger seat and I'm like, you say you don't get a whole lot of time off, right? And she's like, yeah, I want to spend your next day off with you. And she was like taken aback by it. Like, wow, that's that's some ballsy shit. And she's like, I don't usually do this, but yeah, sure, why not? And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's it right there. That's the full Monty. That's what I gave him, full Monty, all of it. So we exchanged phone numbers. 
I wait a little while, a couple hours, you know, I'm getting ready for work and everything. I shoot off my information to her. Yo, this is Monty from the from the guard gate. Just wanted to see how you're doing. This is this is my digits and everything. Next few days we're talking back and forth. We end up going out to dinner. Go to Applebee's. And it wasn't like I was gonna marry this fucking chick or anything, but I did enjoy the, the date for the most part until things started going south, of course, which <laughs> this wouldn't be a good story to tell unless things took a drastic turn for the worse. So we're at Applebee's. Neither of us had a car, so we, you know, kind of just met there. And we uh, ate dinner, had some fun, talked about some stuff. We had some similarities. And then the next day, you know, we walk about like a half mile to my apartment, which is right down the street. And so we get there, and my boys are there. They're drinking. They're having fun. And for whatever, in my mind, my young 21-year-old self decided to be a good idea to start wrestling with my boys in front of this girl because that's going to win hearts and minds right and so i took her outside uh before we left and i was like hey i had a really good date and i would actually like to go on a second one if you would like and she's like yeah i think i'd like that and we're like all right cool just so you know um i'm still technically married i'm going through a divorce right now and i'm pretty sure that's the one that, that sealed the coffin that buried any potential future with this woman <laughs> because in the military if Unless you have those divorce papers in hand, you cannot even, like, look at another woman. You can't even breathe in their direction without the army, like, just destroying you and the person that you're trying to court. Like, they, they, it's a big no-go. Big, big no-go. So, we decide, all right, we got to get this girl back home. Let's get in the, um, let's get in the Malibu. Let's drive her back to post, drop her off at her room. So, Kenny's driving. I'm in passenger no i was driving yes i was driving because kenny didn't didn't want to drive so she's in the back seat i'm driving kenny's in passenger we get up to post as soon as we get there the dude wants to see our our id cards our licenses our registration all of that stuff my license was suspended at the time kenny's was expired no registration for the vehicle like it was just we're fucked that's it but kelly bone Kelly Bone, thank you so much for just being in that car with us that night. Because when the guy saw Kelly in the back and she like leaned out and said, Oh, hey, what's going on? And we started talking. They're in the same unit. They're friends. Like, oh, oh, you're good. Don't worry about it. You know, just just get on, get out of here. You kids have a good night. So we went, drove all the way to the other end of post and dropped her off. And well, I'll just be damned if that wasn't the quickest I had ever seen no one get out of no car before. She booked it out of that thing. She just, like, as soon as we parked, before we could even put the brake on, she was just out of there. And, you know, didn't... I asked her, hey, do you need me to walk you up? Like, no, I'm good. Like, basically, like, yo, fuck off. I don't want anything to do with you or this situation or any of it. So, all right, fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. And so she booked it out. And, yeah, we we talked a little bit after that, but nothing, nothing crazy. But here's the crazy thing about life. I had another encounter with Kelly Bone, but very, very indirectly. You see, about about four or five months later, I was dating this Asian girl, another Asian girl. I you know, had a fetish at the time. You know, it was a little, little bit of something, something I wanted. A little bit of that, little bit of Asian tang on my palate. Not anymore, though. I've sworn off Asian women ever since these women were in my life. But I was dating this girl named Lizzie, and uh, Kenny who it just has to be involved in every freaking story from my military career. He was hanging out with me and Lizzie in her room. Uh, wasn't supposed to be with her because still going through my divorce. Um, we ordered some Chinese food, and there's this girl he's trying to hook up with named Tolly. So he wants to bone Tolly. And we're like, okay, dude, um, just whatever, right? So he gets Lizzie's phone because they're in the same unit. Hits Lizzie, uh, uh, hits, hits Tolly up, and is like, yo, this is Kenny. Yo, I want to know if you want to like hang out and something. We can you know, get some action going. Because Tolly was kind of promiscuous, let's just say. And then he, Kenny ended up leaving for whatever fuck odd reason. So me and Lizzie are hanging out in the room. I'm not supposed to be there. There's a knock on the door. So I rush off into the closet. And it's it's a concrete building, so all the walls are like concrete. So it's really like kind of hard to hear anything in the closet with all of our like clothes and shit. The door opens. They're arguing for a second. Then I hear a loud thud and then the door slam. And then by the time the door slams, I come out to see what the fuck's going on. And I might have been naked at this point, but that's neither here nor there. Turns out, Tolly was the one that knocked on the door. 
and she was pissed off that apparently Lizzie was giving her number out to people. So she grabbed Lizzie's hair and smashed her face against the side of the refrigerator, which was right next to the door. And uh, when I found out about this, I was so upset. So Lizzie did the first thing that she could think of. She called her direct supervisor, who then called the MPs. So we not only have her superiors coming over to check on her, we have military police coming over. And me, still technically a married man, because I didn't have my divorce papers in hand at this point, my career would have been over with. I would have been fucked. And I couldn't do that. So what do I do? I jump on out the window and, and fucking leave. And Lizzie understood. She kind of encouraged me to do that, to, to save myself. And, and, and I book it on. But then we, we're, we're at work uh, a couple days later and we're talking. It turns out that the MP that came to do the investigation was none other than Kelly Bone. Just shows you what a really small world that we live in. So it, that's, some, that's a point of my life that I just kind of broke my mold, did something risky, and just had an awesome time. And I'm telling you, it could be the exact same for you, for you watching this. Just do something crazy. Do something different. Do something that you've never done before and just see where it takes you. Um, th these are not experiences I'm necessarily proud of, but these are experiences I have nonetheless that have kind of molded me into who I am today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of this, or you guys want to know more, hit me down in the comment section down below. I'm always willing to fucking hit you guys up just like that. As always, I've been your oh-so-glorious and beloved Mace Fowler. Signing off.